Welcome to this month's Third Thursday webinar, brought to you by Synergy Settlement Services. The Third Thursday webinar is part of an ongoing free monthly webinar series. Each presentation is done by a Synergy subject matter expert who will tackle difficult issues that arise at settlement. During today's presentation, if you have questions, type them into the control panel where it says questions. The following brief presentation will give you an overview of what Synergy does in 30 seconds. A uh, trial lawyer's job isn't to know all the nuances, to know what it takes to keep Medicaid in place or SSI and preserve Medicare and comply with the Medicare Secondary Payer Act and resolve these complicated liens that may be present. So all of those issues are issues that the trial lawyer really doesn't have the time or the expertise to deal with they need a partner that they can rely upon that can handle all of those issues and that's that's exactly what synergy is my name is jason lazarus chief executive officer of synergy settlement services welcome to today's third thursday webinar today's presentation will do a deep dive into tax deferral options for contingent legal fees. An often overlooked issue for plaintiff attorneys is the management of taxation of their contingent legal fees. As part of the normal rhythm of your practice, you probably experience peaks and valleys in your own personal income. This leads to concerns about the unpredictability of your own income. By using proper planning techniques, Lawyers have a unique opportunity to tax plan for tomorrow by availing themselves of attorney fee deferral options, which avoids current year taxation of contingent legal fees. Personal injury attorneys, because of the fact that they're compensated on contingency fee basis, have income streams that can be erratic and can face significant tax burdens when they do get paid, especially with larger settlements. So using a fee deferral program is a practical way to put money aside that you earn today and use it for expenses in the future, uh, all the while saving on the tax payments. And by deferring income until later in life, you may be able to enjoy the benefits of a lower tax rate. Really what this boils down to is better control over timing of income. Most trial lawyers have cash flow that varies year to year. They can have spikes in income that might not be desirable from a tax planning perspective or from a cash flow perspective. So using fee deferral mechanisms, it can smooth out income and timing of income and help with taxation. So the question is, how does it do that? Well, the answer is uh, by using the underpinnings of Childs v. Commissioner, which was uh, the first, only, and last time the IRS challenged a fee deferral arrangement. Um, in the Childs case, the uh, attorneys had decided to uh, avail themselves of an attorney fee structure, and so the question was whether the attorney fee structure, which was set up to pay out into the future, caused any taxation uh, of the fees that were structured in the year that the attorney fee structure was effectuated, so at settlement. Um, and the court held that the attorneys did not have any current income in the year in which the settlement agreements were effectuated because the promise to make payments under the structured settlement agreement was not funded or secured, and that the doctrine of constructive receipt wasn't applicable because the attorneys had no right to receive their fees before the time the agreement establishing a structured settlement became effective. So um, subsequent uh, to the child's decision, um, and this was more recently, the child's decision was actually cited by the IRS um, in PLR 15-08-50-07 uh, as a precedent for tax deferral um, in that particular PLR, it actually dealt with tax deferral of um, taxable damage awards. So the IRS is now citing Childs as um, uh, controlling precedent. So, uh, you know, 25 years after that decision, um, Childs is really the 
the, the basis for all attorney fee deferral programs. There are some key reasons why you want to consider these tax deferral mechanisms for your contingent legal fees. First and foremost, it allows you to take your fee on a pre-tax and tax deferred basis and invest it, 100% of that fee. So instead of lopping off money for taxes and investing after tax, it is completely pre-tax. Uh, the options in terms of investments are pretty limitless. You can have fixed or variable annuities, mutual funds, ETFs, stocks, bonds, pretty much whatever you want. Um, and what's beautiful about it is you can structure as much fees in any given year as you want, and there's no penalties when withdrawals start, regardless of when they start. It allows you to have better control over the timing of income and taxation and can be a supplement to your existing retirement plans. So the question is, by availing yourself of this, how does it help you? Well, it helps you customize cash flow management. Less is being lost to taxes. Application of alternative minimum tax can potentially be avoided. Um, if you don't want any more taxable income in a given year, you are able to exercise control over when you take income. Uh, most states do have protection from legal process of the types of tax deferral mechanisms that are out there. So it is a, a, uh, a way to uh, protect your assets, so an asset protection mechanism. Um, and it can be used in certain instances as a way to tie certain uh, attorneys in your firm to the firm to prevent them from leaving. Uh, but it also can be used to provide lifetime income for yourself with cost of living increases, uh, retirement income for you and your spouse, funding future needs such as expenses for your children, large purchases, um, and then it can just be used to supplement your monthly overhead currently, but spreading it out over time. When you compare the attorney fee deferral programs to a qualified plan, it, it becomes a no-brainer. There's no maximum or minimum contributions with a deferred uh, attorney fee program. There's no limits on when or how you can take distributions. You can retire before age 59 and a half. There is no need for any of your employees to participate in these programs. There's no ERISA compliance. So it's completely exempt from all of the rules that relate to your qualified plans. While there are a lot of different attorney fee deferral products, there are really only two basic ways to defer. One is an annuity-based attorney fee structure, and the other is uh, deferred compensation plans. In terms of the solutions, there are four primary products. First are fixed attorney fee structure annuities. Second are equity index attorney fee structure annuities. Third is non-qualified attorney fee structures and lastly, deferred compensation plans. First, let's talk about attorney fee structure annuities. So these are annuities just like structured settlements that are used for injury victim clients. They can be set up with immediate payments or deferred. It can be for just a certain period of time or for your lifetime. These are done at the time of settlement and as part of the settlement documentation. So you have to decide ahead of time whether you're going to do it. And a plan attorney can avoid constructive receipt and defer fees along with the associated taxes by utilizing an attorney fee structure annuity. The investment is tax deferred and payouts from the fee structure are only taxable in the year received. And you can structure all or part of a fee. So there's not uh, an all or nothing decision that has to be made. You can, you can structure half your fee, a quarter of your fee, whatever, it's completely up to you. So structuring your fees, as I said, provides a pre-tax and tax deferred investment vehicle for you. And it allows you to take your fees that you're earning today and get them paid at a later date. Uh, most of these products have a minimum investment of $10,000 and you have to do a predetermined payment schedule across taxable years that can't be changed. You can uh, potentially, by utilizing this product, defer income to years when your personal tax rate is lower, 
you'll get a 1099 reporting in the year that payments are made. So there's two different mechanisms. Uh, one is a fixed fee structure, one is an index fee structure. The fixed fee structure are uh, a guaranteed payment uh, that does not fluctuate. Um, it can be used to pay for predictable or unforeseen expenses, children's educational needs, retirement income needs, whatever you want. This type of product has really no investment risk um, and a fairly competitive rate of return, although it is more conservative. The rates of return are similar to bonds and other long-term debt instruments. Um, really, the only risk that there is is if the life insurance company that was selected happened to go out of business, which if you say with A-plus or A-double-plus companies like Berkshire Hathaway, MetLife, New York Life, Pacific Life, there's very little uh, risk, but there's absolutely no market risk on the investment side with the fixed fee structures. Equity indexed fee structures are very similar, except that your investment is tied to the um, S&P 500. What's nice about this product is that it actually ratchets, um, and I'll explain a little bit more of that. But this, this product really doesn't have much investment risk because there is a downside protection, um, but it does offer a little bit more of a rate of return, uh, although it is capped at, at a total of 5% return. Uh, but if there is a zero return in any given year, there is no loss. If you're going to uh, consider a fixed attorney fee structure, really what you have to compare it to is a typical uh, bond portfolio and bond investments, um, because really that's the most apples to apples comparison. When you do that, which is what this slide illustrates based on a um, an investment after tax of a half a million in corporate bonds versus investing 800,000 in attorney fee structures since tax would not be deducted, um, what you see is that you're gonna be positive um, almost $60,000 by utilizing uh, an attorney fee structure over a bond investment portfolio. So these fixed attorney fee structures are really a great vehicle for the fixed income portion of your investment portfolio. Everybody should have some portion of their investments in a fixed income vehicle, and that's exactly what this is, except it's pre-tax and tax deferred. So the equity indexed is uh, a little bit different. It is uh, something that provides a little more growth, but has downside protection. So this slide shows you an illustration of how it works. Basically, your payments can never go down. So if there's a zero uh, for the S&P 500 in any given year, your payment would stay the same. So it starts out, um, in this example, at a level 1500. In year one, there's a 3% return for the S&P 500, so the payment ratchets up to 1545. Um, but then um, after year one, there's a negative 1% return in the S&P. The payment stays at 1545 and does not decrease, but then keeps going up and ratchets up as market performance continues to improve. So you see payments go up to 1622, 1703, and it keeps going and going and going. So this product is nice because it does give you a little more um, equity exposure, but as I said, the, the cap is 5% on total growth. So um, it is not going to perform like exactly like the stock market, but it does perform a little bit better than typically a bond portfolio would. And this is pre-tax, tax deferred, same thing. It's just a different product for attorney fee deferral annuities if you select an equity index product. Um, and the only one that offers it is Pacific Life, which happens to be a highly rated company, great company. Uh, actually, I was involved in an accident in 2016, and my structured settlement is with Pacific Life, so I wholeheartedly believe in their, uh, their financial security and strength. So we've talked about attorney fee structures, which offer a fixed or equity index option. 
Uh, the next available product is a non-qualified attorney fee structure. Uh, and what that is, is it's an offshore assignment, which means the money briefly goes offshore but comes back onshore. This particular po product allows uh, you to achieve the same tax deferral as the annuities offer, but you have the potential for market-based returns. It works the same way in terms of, of distributions. You get a 1099 when money is paid out of the non-qualified attorney fee structure. You can use your own financial advisor or model portfolios that are offered through Evolve Bank and Trust, and the funds are ultimately invested with the risk and return profile that you desire. You can use stocks, mutual funds, ETFs, other fixed income or alternative investments. So, okay, we've talked about attorney fee structures. We've talked about uh, non-qualified uh, assignment uh, for attorney fees. So the last product that I'm gonna address are deferred compensation plans. Um, and these really offer the most flexibility and options. And what it is is, uh, you know, Fortune 500 executives routinely use these types of methods to defer compensation. It allows you to exercise greater control over the timing of income and taxation, uh, which is all the things I talked about at the outset of the presentation. The mechanism to do that is a uh, non-qualified deferred compensation plan. So um, that's accomplished with a very uh, well-known mechanism called a rabbi trust. So this is a little bit different uh, because you're not tying your fee deferral to a fixed annuity return. You're tying your returns to a customized investment portfolio, like in a 401k, but without the limits. So the reason to defer, obviously, are things that I've already talked about, reducing tax burden, um, helping with your wealth accumulation, um, and this can also be used as a way to retain attorneys within your firm by setting up these programs to include uh, associate attorneys. So with attorney fee structure annuities, you set up a specific pay payment plan and you have no ability to change that plan. Uh, with the deferred compensation arrangements, it's different. Um, and the best way to illustrate it uh, is by using an example. So let's assume that in this year, you decide that you want to defer a million dollars in contingent legal fees. Uh, the way it works with deferred compensation plans is you can split that $1 million plus your investment earnings into 20 quarterly payment buckets over a five-year period of time. 13 months prior to any scheduled payment bucket, you can elect to withdraw it. But if you don't want the payment as scheduled, that payment bucket automatically rolls to the end of the line. So basically, it allows you to elect a year in advance whether you want to take money or not. It's a shorter duration uh, period of time, but it allows you the ultimate control because you can keep deferring these buckets as long as you'd like. And so when you ladder the payments in this way, it allows you to manage cash flow and control that, that taxation timing. And you know, in the end, really, this is a, a, a have your cake and eat it too type of scenario. Um, you get to control the investment options and you get to decide when you take income. This particular slide shows you graphically what it looks like uh, for a deferral using this type of an arrangement. Um, this is a little data because it's showing you a de tax deferral date of 2018. Uh, and then the first payment bucket coming in 2020 and going through 2025. So each of those um, four quarterly payment buckets are the ones that you can elect one year in advance whether you want to receive that or not. And the foundation, the legal foundation for these types of arrangements are the same as all the rest. It goes back to that Childs v. Commissioner uh, decision, which is what all of the attorney fee deferral options are based upon. One of the really important things uh, as part of this presentation is to really show you the power of this type of planning and how it can be accomplished. 
So the remainder of the presentation is going to focus on the illustrations of how deferral can impact timing of income. This slide shows in graphic form what it looks like to normalize income using an attorney fee deferral mechanism. And really the key thing to, to, to notice is that by doing this, you can have a lot more money invested and spread the taxation out over years, normalizing income so that that spike doesn't occur in that particular year. It's like it did not occur. It's spread out over the following how many ever years you decide to set up a plan to pay out over. The point of this slide really is not for you to look at all these numbers and figures, but this is an actual a spreadsheet of attorney fee structure annuities for a law firm uh, that I've worked with for 20 plus years. And what they did was they took little chunks of fees that they've earned and set up attorney fee structures with a bunch of different life insurance companies, basically to diversify uh, and to capitalize on better rates. So uh, by putting together a long-term plan of doing attorney fee deferrals, they were able to diversify and maximize their investment returns on attorney fee structure annuities. What this shows is that same law firm's um, payments that are coming into them via an attorney fee structure uh, over time because they set these up with different payment streams. Um, so this aggregates all the payments together but so you can see it's a pretty you know substantial amount of income that's coming into them on a uh, annual basis and as I said it was done with small chunks of fees $25,000 here $50,000 there $100,000 um, so it, it adds up over time and, and creates a pretty nice uh, stream either for retirement or to help offset overhead expenses. This particular page of the spreadsheet shows how the payments are coming in from the different companies that the attorney fee structures were done with. So again, it shows you the diversification and how the income comes in by life company. Since these are tax advantage plans, there are rules and formalities which can be a bit inflexible. It is a well accepted tax construction though that works. A lawyer who earns a contingent fee must decide before settlement to have his fee paid over time instead of taking it in a lump sum. The decision to defer can be made at any point before the settlement agreement is signed, even right up to the moment before the agreement is executed. Even though a fee has been technically earned over the course of representation of the client, the lawyer hasn't earned the fee for tax purposes until the settlement documents are executed. An attorney has the autonomy to decide whether to defer all or part of their fee in this way. So in summary, attorney fee deferral solutions allow a plaintiff lawyer to not only defer receipt of and tax on fees until received, he or she can have the deferred fees invested and have the income produced from it also taxable over time rather than immediately. A lawyer may want to consider deferring fees as part of his own income tax financial planning, and estate planning. Tax deferral mechanisms for lawyers are a great way to smooth out those spikes in income caused by larger fees or just to take better control over timing of income. Due to the variety of different options, there's likely something that will best suit your needs and investment preferences. You should explore these options to take control back of the timing of your income. So I wanted to shift gears uh, for a moment and talk a little bit about qualified settlement funds at the end of this presentation because there is a connection to attorney fee deferral options and qualified settlement funds are a unique way to allow an attorney to immediately settle with a defendant uh, but still preserve their ability to do an attorney fee structure or attorney fee deferral mechanism without the involvement of the defendant. Qualified settlement funds are a temporary trust that are created pursuant to Treasury regulations found at section 1.468B. 
sometimes you'll you'll hear them referred to as a 468B or a qualified settlement fund that's created under 468B. And really the bottom line of it is, is it's just a holding tank and allows for you to really do what you would normally do if you were settling for cash with the defendant, which is execute a very simple release and not have any language tied to your attorney fee deferral included in that release. Um, instead, the money can be placed into qualified settlement fund and frequently these are used um, for the clients at the same time because, you know, if there are complicated issues that need to be dealt with, for example, structured settlements, special needs trusts, Medicare set-asides, all of those things can be planned for and done out of a QSF, including an attorney fee structure or attorney fee deferral mechanism. So these QSFs avoid triggering constructive receipt. The only drawback to a QSF is that it does require court approval and there's some additional small costs in setting it up, those drawbacks are usually outweighed by the flexibility they provide to the attorney who wants to defer their fees and also if there are complicated issues in that particular case that need to be resolved, uh, but you want to get the money immediately from the defendant. There are only three requirements to establish a qualified settlement fund. First, it's got to be established pursuant to an order of a court of law got to be established to resolve or satisfy one or more claims arising out of a tort, and it's got to be a trust under applicable state law, and that's all that's necessary for a qualified settlement fund. In terms of the mechanics of how it works when a qualified settlement fund is used is you have a uh, cash settlement basically with the defendant. You execute a normal cash release, except the consideration in the release is a payment to the qualified settlement fund instead of to your trust account. Um, you would petition a court of law and obtain an order that's creating the QSF. And then the funds sit in the QSF without violating constructive receipt until decisions are made. That decision could be whether you uh, defer taxation of your fees. It could be uh, to deal with liens for the underlying injury victim or if there's special needs trust issues or MSAs. Um, all those sorts of decisions. And then the QSF terminates when all the funds have been dispersed from the QSF. So the typical cases uh, when a QSF is used is when there are multiple claimants and allocation issues between them, or there could be multiple layers of coverage where you want to aggregate settlement monies before making any decisions. There's complex lien resolution issues, public benefit planning issues, or uh, structured settlements or contemplation of attorney fee deferral or all of the above. We've created a unique qualified settlement fund solution that is low cost and easy to establish. The fees for creating it is 0 .001 times the opening trust balance. The foundation for those with special needs is the trustee of the QSF. It does not require an individual QSF trust for each QSF. Instead, there's a pretty simple um, petition and order that's done to create a sub-trust underneath the master trust. Um, we have two different banking institutions that are um, the custodian of the assets, depending on uh, which uh, solution is selected. It's either Evolve or Pinnacle Bank. Um, neither of those banking institutions charge a fee for their services, and this is a uh, a great solution for cases where you do want to avail yourself of an attorney fee deferral option. That concludes today's presentation. If you have any questions at all about the presentation uh, or would like a copy of the slides, you can email me at jason at synergysettlements.com or contact me on our toll-free number. Compliance issues at settlement are frustrating, time-consuming, and costly to the firm. Synergy tackles the case after the case, so you can focus on what you do best. We understand we how understand, we understand, fight we understand, for every penny the injury victim deserves. No one should lose a single dollar of their recovery. They don't have to, and we make sure they don't. We have a deep team of professionals dedicated to protecting the recovery, so you can be confident that your client has received everything they deserve. We do this by offering efficient healthcare lien resolution services, 
cutting edge Medicare secondary payer compliance solutions, customized settlement consulting and government benefit preservation techniques, structured settlements and trust services. Consult with one of our industry leading settlement experts by calling us at 877-242-0022 or visiting us on the web at synergysettlements.com. Thanks for attending today's third Thursday webinar. So we have a couple of questions that uh, came in during the webinar and I wanted to address those. Uh, the first question uh, was whether all attorneys in a law firm need to participate in the fee deferral options. Uh, the answer to that is no. It can be an agreement amongst the attorneys who have uh, part of their fees um, as part of the settlement, whether they want to defer it or not. So it's not an all or nothing. When it comes to fee deferral, it can be a portion of a fee. It can be one lawyer's fee in particular. It's just that those things have to be decided upon at the time of settlement. Another question was whether a personal injury victim has to structure a portion of their settlement before an attorney fee can be structured? The answer to that is no. The personal injury victim can take cash and you can still avail yourself of any of the fee deferral mechanisms, whether it's an attorney fee, uh, attorney fee structure annuity or a, a deferred compensation arrangement. Another question was how fee deferral works in general. So if you're doing an attorney fee structure, it works very similar to structuring the injury victim settlement. The most important thing to remember is you can't take receipt of the fees. Same with the deferred compensation arrangements. There are documentary requirements and you cannot take possession of the fees, so you never want to have the fees come into your trust account. Another question, how do I determine which solutions to use to defer fees? So the question of whether a fee deferral product is appropriate is going to depend on a variety of factors, including your age, health, risk tolerance, retirement goals, your tax bracket, as well as your current and long-term needs. The fee deferral programs can provide beneficial tax relief depending on your tax bracket and stable tax deferred income for the rest of your life if you use an annuity in particular. Another question is, if I do an attorney fee structure annuity, can I receive the same types of income streams the victim can with their settlement proceeds? And the answer is yes, it's, it's the identical product. You can do lifetime payments, you can do period certain payments, you can do lump sum payments, you can do immediate or deferred payments, and you can have a combination of all those. You can have multiple income streams paying out of the attorney fee structure. Another question is, can I only structure contingent fees from a personal injury or wrongful death settlement? And the answer is no, you can structure or defer, uh, defer taxation on any contingent fee. It does not have to be a personal injury case. So there's a lot of different options available depending on uh, what you would like to accomplish. Uh, last question is, what do I need to do to prepare for structuring attorney fees. Basically, you just wanna make sure you negotiate the inclusion of any fee deferral program when settling the case. Since the creation of the tax deferred solutions does require in most instances the cooperation of the defendant and there's language that has to go into the settlement documents. Uh, Another question is, is the time of settlement before the client signs the release? So for purposes of fee deferral, up until the release is signed is really the period of time where you can elect to defer. The, um, the IRS takes the position that basically once the release is signed, the fee has been earned at that point. So these decisions really have to be made prior to. And, because as I said, there's required language that has to be in the settlement documents, you wanna make that election prior to the release being executed anyway. 
I don't see any other questions. So with that, we'll conclude today's webinar. Thank you again for attending.